What's going on YouTube? Clay Kizolt back again with another Final Fantasy Brave Exodus video and in today's video we're going over all of the new 7 stars that just came out in our game so let's get into it. So first up here, guys, we have Duke. Um, Duke was a Dragoon, went up to 5-star to 6-star. Now he gets his 7-star unlocked ability, so let's take a look at it. First off, let's talk about his STMR, and you're definitely going to want to pick this up if you have a lot of Dukes, okay? You don't want double Duke. You want to just get this TMR. Uh, Virtue Drake, attack 173 spear, effect Dragon Killer plus, meaning 75%. Guys, this is the spear you guys are going to be using if you're going against any any type of dragon or dragoon most more often than not will probably be using this bad boy with that dragon killer plus for going against a dragon very very strong there you want to pick that up so looking over duke's old kit um he could chain a bit but it wasn't very good you can see that his numbers here weren't that great um he, he also wasn't that great at finishing due to the fact that most of his big finishing abilities were jumps and just like with any dragoon uh you really needed to be able to time that to come down uh, on the next turn or you were kind of screwed so that's kind of the things we're looking for here we're looking to see if he can maybe chain a bit but if he's still going to be a finisher that he has some time jumps so let's look into this so at seven star he has heaven fall spear sky roll um increased physical damage against dragons 200 percent so he jumps in there 200% for two turns the caster. Uh, physical damage 4.7 uh, times with time jump, which means you can time it to come down when you want to. Uh, one turn to one enemy. So, essentially, this jump right here is going to be extremely powerful against dragons. And then kind of meh, it gets enough anything else because of this tiny little multiplier. However, it is a time jump making it better than the other jumps that used to be. So when you guys are looking at this, look for that word timed to know that you guys can bring it on down hard. Uh, then we have uh, Gillette or Gillette. Gillette, the best of men. Okay, physical damage 6.4 times the one enemy. Increased ice resist 70% for three turns to all allies. So again, this is his chaining move. Um, I do believe it's like a... Big startup chain uh, frame, so like, and then it's seven, 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 seven down the line. Not that easy to chain with in the current meta, I do not believe. Um, and it doesn't really have that big of a multiplier anyway. You're pretty much using this to do the ice resist, okay? So things aren't looking that great unless you're against a dragon, which I guess makes sense for a dragoon. Uh, five turn cooldown available in turn five. Uh oh. Physical damage seven times the wall enemies, so he has a seven times, uh, it's a one hitter. Uh, decrease ice resist 100% for three turns of wall enemies, okay. Decrease defense 70% to all enemies. So he has a big... So this right here is pretty good support-wise, right? We're getting that ice resist down. Big defensive break. Enable skills for two turns to cast. Heaven Fall Spear Icebreaker. So let's go see what that is. Uh, Heaven Fall Spear Icebreaker right here. Increased physical damage against dragons 200% for two turns to caster. Um, ice physical damage 7.5 with a time jump. One turn delay to one enemy. So he's going to jump in there and you can time him to come down. He can use that two turns. It Pretty much all this is doing is adding ice right so 7.5 times oh it's a big it's it's a bigger it's a bigger multiplier but again uh, if you're not against a dragon it doesn't really help his kid out too much um so again hey dude duke hates dragons and that makes sense but this doesn't really help him out in any way there the ice resist plus i mean i guess using his stmr perhaps to get even more killer abilities jump in the air and it has ice imbued on it is pretty sweet because you get to uh, take advantage of this ice resist down looking at his uh his passives we have here um tmr equips so if you put his tmr on uh he has what dual wielding we don't want to dual wield him he's a finisher right uh so this is kind of useless here increased defense i don't say useless you can still do what you want uh it puts up his defense spirit hp and mp kind of like him to maybe maybe survive a little bit more and then he has true dual wield uh 40 percent uh not the best in the world uh we can see that his other abilities did get a one times modifier increase so those are going to be all the ones that he had before but again, just not the greatest. He does have the uh, the one thing going for him is he can imbue whichever one of these elements you kind of maybe have a big imperil for. But if you're using his kit, you kind of just don't want to have anything on anyway. You use this uh, this move right here, and you come down with ice. I guess I don't know. Uh, perhaps use these early on in the fight. Uh, maybe put the lightning on when you're chaining with lightning and you have an imperil. You know, use the um, heaven fall spear sky rule drop. The problem I have with this is you are actually on a one turn delay, right? So you jump in there with a one turn delay and come down. So it takes two turns to just do 4.7 uh, times damage. If you're against dragons, we'll do a lot more than that, but that's the problem we have there. Then he has attack, uh, increased attack 20%, and then it is 120. He has auto heal every turn. Increased jump damage 80%. So, that's something else I'm kind of uh, not really talking about, so I'm good it's brought up here. There are ways to increase your jump damage, so maybe that's why the modifiers are a little bit lower. You can get that jump damage up through a lot of different equipment, a lot of different abilities and passives. So, that actually really helps out with that, but again, I don't think you're really using Duke unless you're against dragons. Um, 
Oh, increased magic damage against dragons and physical damage against dragons when you have all these different things equipped. I'm telling you guys, he hates dragons and he will kill them. Uh, we've uh, already gone over all of his um, enhancements in the past, and then he does have ice physical damage nine times, ignore defense 50%, which is an 18 times modifier, five hitter for his limit burst, which is going to be uh, very, uh, you know, cool to use. It is split over five turns, but hey, you can kind of fit that in there. Hopefully, in the, at the end of uh, at the end of a chain, at least get some of those hits to be uh, popping off with that chain. So overall, Duke is useful. Uh, in the sense that if you need to fight a dragon, you can pop out this Dragoon and start going to work. I do really like his STMR. Um, they did fix some of the things that were wrong with him, giving him a few time jumps, which is cool. But it didn't really make him anything special against anything that aren't dragons. Next up, since we're talking about Dragoons, might as well get this one out of the way. It's Aranea or Arabea. If you guys really are into that. Uh, so we look at the STMR here. We have Skylancer, which is going to be an incredible STMR. Uh, specifically because it does fill in that slot of true double hand, right? Increase equipment attack 100% when single wielding any weapon, meaning true double hand. And then also adds 30% when you're equipped with a spear. So if you're going to be true double handing and you're going to be using a spear, it adds some attack to it. So very good STMR there. Um, I know people out there are still searching and scrambling to get their true double hand together. Uh, you got to have four Arabeas, but eventually you're going to be able to pick that up. Uh, moving on down again, uh, Aranea is a uh, Dragoon. Um, kind of falls into the same problems we just talked about. We need a time jump to be happening. Uh, and probably going to be a finisher because that's how they are. Maybe some big multipliers. Maybe some jump passives and some uh, killer abilities in the passives. Uh, let's look at what she gets. So, Dragoon dra uh, Dive. I was going to say Drive. Dragoon Dive. Uh, physical damage 4.7 times with a ju time jump delay to one enemy. So, essentially, this is like worse than what Duke had, right? This is essentially what we just talked about with Duke uh, without the dragon... Uh, killer being added on so not the happy about this no 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 not too happy about that aerial supremacy uh so we have a available in turn one four turn cooldown increase attack 200 percent for two turns increase lb gauge 15 to caster so you cast this you get 15 lb gauge up now let's go ahead i'm going to take a minute to go ahead and scroll down and look at her lb 30 so it gives you half of your lb in one turn and one move which is decent i wish i would just give it all to her though uh but i guess you can't ask for everything High Dragoon Dive, so it's going to be uh, higher once she jumps higher. Um, see, here's the problem, though. Physical damage 7.5 times with a time jump delay two turns to one enemy. So normally, a Dragoon jumps in the air, you know, then the next turn you can come down. For this move, you're going to jump in the air, wait a turn, wait a turn, then you come down. Because she jumps so high up. And I don't think this is... I, I must, either I'm missing something or this is just really, really bad, okay? So, you guys can let me know in the comments below. These, this is not as good. It seems like Duke's already beating Arabea uh, because of at least the Dragon Killer abilities being added in. So, let's go through the passives. I don't think I'm going to waste two turns to go in there and come down with a 7.5 times multiplier. I just don't think it's what I, I want to be doing in my game. Finishers are already, like, you know, icing on the cake. And if you have to be waiting two turns for your uh, finisher to come down and do anything... It's kind of tough, all right? Moving on down, we have some passives here. Increase equipment attack 50% when single wielding any weapon. So we do have a uh, 50% true double hand passive going in if you have the TMR equipped. What was her TMR, by the way? Uh, it's her Stoss Spear, okay? Two-handed weapon, not bad. Get some jump da uh, jump damage, so high jump. Let's see what the high jump was again. Uh, I am forgetting a bit here. High jump, increase jump damage. Okay, so possibly, even though I was talking all this up about um, Duke's STMR, I, I did forget this jump damage and this being a two-handed... Uh, Weapons, so you possibly are even using Stoss' Spear here. Dragoons are hard, dude. Dragoons are a lot of math, thinking about time, time, jump damage, timing your jump down, getting all these uh, different things going in. Uh, but possibly that could be what you want to use, because, especially on her, because you get this 50% uh, innate uh, true double hand there, and you would get the weapon variants from it as well. Um, she does have increased jump damage. Uh, not really doing it for me. Let's look at her... Uh, she has a 24 times uh, one hit, so that's pretty big. Her her damage from her limit burst is pretty big, 24 times. Here's the problem, guys. Aranea has no way of uh, self-imbuing herself like Duke did. Um, Aranea does have a great TMR, a great STMR, but I feel like Duke pulled ahead. I mean, at least Duke against dragons does more damage. Um, she does have 50% innate true double hand, but I guess we could really just get that somewhere else in our building our materia and our equipment up on Duke. So I'm going to give it to Duke on this one. I do think that Roberta is the best Dragoon we have um, in Global. I think that Duke is second, I guess, uh, when we're talking about the ones, if we're only going to talk about Roberta, Duke, and Aranea, and then our Bea falls short. So you're pretty much just bringing her for the Bea part. Next up, we have everybody's favorite cameraman, Prompto. So uh, let's see what happens here. Moonmaker was always a great TMR. Uh, he gets a... Um, a gun pass, it looks like. I mean, a gun, a gun uh, STMR, excuse me. Executioner, attack 161, and effect gives dual wield. 
So this could be interesting, you know? I mean, it gives dual wield, it has a high attack stat. Uh, for somebody who wants to maybe true uh, dual wield, maybe even like lightning. Well, lightning already has dual wield in her kit. Dang it! So, okay. But somebody who's wanting to true dual wield uh, can equip guns. This is a high gun. And then the other hand, you put your elemental weapon in it and you just go to town. I, I don't really know where this can be used, but I'm not going to write it off as being bad because it definitely has uses, uh, possibly in the future too, with having such a high stat. It's going to be kind of niche though because of the gun, right? Not a, not a lot of people can use guns, uh, but I like it. I got to get excited about it because it's because it, it's so unique. You know what I mean? It's so unique. Uh, moving on down, let's talk about Prompto and what he had at six stars. So essentially, Prompto is the first unit to come out with W cast. Kind of shaping the meta, allowing you to do the whole true double hand, um, not worry about uh, dual wielding and be able to cast abilities twice. It was Circular Saw, which is the one you wanted to use. It is even in the Octaslash family, which was easy to chain in my opinion. Um, you know, not as easy as Divine Rotation, but still easy to chain. And now in Global, Octaslash has become a big thing. It seems like on every unit, Octaslash is getting added, which is great. Um, but what do we need at 7 star to kind of bring him in? Well, he needs higher multipliers. If we look here, this is only like a 4.5 times multiplier on a Circular Saw. Not really going to cut it. Another problem he had was, you know, elemental, uh, you know, elemental imbuing himself in a way he could, he could, you know, he could shoot his guns off and decrease and imperil, but he never had a way of putting it on himself. So you had to find a way of doing that. So possibly, um, Maybe there's some way to put that on him uh, as well. So let's look over his kit. So uh, first off, we have Overheal, Overkill here, which is going to randomly use one of these Overkill abilities. I'm hoping they talk about that somewhere on here, because if they don't, then it's going to be tough for me to... Um, Talk about these selfie shot. I guess they haven't gotten to him yet in here. So what I'm going to go ahead and do is pull it up somewhere else and we'll talk about it there. All right, guys, so we're back. I had to go do a little bit of research because this isn't updated on the wiki. But essentially, when you use overkill, it's going to do a, uh, a like, I think a four times uh, one hit physical damage to the opponent and then randomly unlock one of these. So you have 40% chance to unlock a 40 hit 8.4 times multiplier uh, chaining ability that you can use uh, after using this ability if it, it triggers that. And the frames are like 55555. There's like a big frame and it's like 55555 for 40 hits, uh, which is pretty crazy. The next one, you have a 40% chance to either uh, unlock an ability that you can use that does 35% death or a big 9.4 uh, five times multiplier if the death doesn't proc is what I'm assuming. And then you have a 20% chance to unlock a bazooka ability uh, where it does 15.7 times one hit multiplier. So that's going to be a big finish. So that's what that does. Now looking at selfie shot, it's a 45% chance, 30% and 25% chance. Each of these chances, it's going to Libra the opponent, get the information off the opponent, but also um, it has a chance of casting either 40% MP to yourself, 80 MP to yourself, or 240 uh, uh, MP to yourself. So those are what those um, abilities do. So we got through that. We learned all about that. That's good. So let's talk about those abilities real quick. It allows him to have a huge chain that he can cast and he can, uh, hopefully, uh, the, you know, these abilities when they're random, it's kind of rough to be able to mess with that too much. Um, be, having to use this and like take a turn off to hopefully get the big chaining move or possibly turn into a finisher it, It's kind of rough, but gives him kind of some fun to play around with the selfie shot um, I think you use it like once per turn and it does cost LB crystals Which is rough because I do believe his LB is pretty good. We'll look down here in a minute next up We have trigger happy available in turn four three turn cooldown physical damage 13.5 times to an enemy and activates crack shot So let's go take a look at what crack shot is. It's right here. Um Physical damage seven times with an ordinary sense fifty percent, so it's a fourteen times one hit um, finishing ability. So it seems weird that they keep adding all these finishers into his kit when really I wanted him to be a chainer. Uh, that's what he was supposed to be before. So they're kind of giving him some chaining ability, some finishing ability. He already has W cast, but let's look and see what Prompto has in store for us in his passives. Um, increased attack one hundred percent, and actually when single wielding any weapon. Uh, he also so he has a hundred percent true double hand and fifty percent true dual wield. Either way, you want to be able to do that. He'll counter with snapshot, which is if we look down here, it'll inflict stop fifty five percent to all enemies and also inflicts blind and confuse one hundred percent. So he looks like he might be decent in the arena if you throw his TMR on him, man. That seems really good in the arena. I like. I'm actually gonna put Prompto on my team. I do believe that seems awesome. It upgrades his LB too. That's when you have his TMR equipped. If we go up here and look at his TMR, it's a mood maker, and as I said, pretty good TMR. Scrolling on down through the rest of his passives, enables dual wielding of one-handed daggers and guns, so he already has dual wield in his kit. 
Kind of is weird, but uh, that's good. Uh, so that you can do that if you want to. So you can either build him uh, the dual wielding way, which I don't think is the way you want to go, the true dual wield. I do believe you want to go true double hand, especially since he already has uh, W cast. Unbreakable bonds. Um, increase attack defense 30% when equipped with a dagger. Increase attack and spirit 30% when equipped with a gun. And increase LB damage 30%. So that's when you get him to 120. Uh, let's go ahead and look at his uh, 7 star here. Physical damage 10.7 times to all enemies. Inflict 3 random uh, status elements 60% uh, to all enemies. Enable skill uh, for 2 turns crack shot, which is that finisher we talked about right here. That's 14 times multiplier. So overall, I don't think they really fixed Prompto. To make him meta, like it's, if we're talking about meta units, I think that um, they really needed to add imbue to his kit. But I do believe his enhancements do add that. So look forward to his enhancements uh, for that to be added. If you're looking for Prompto to be that big damage dealing uh, boss that you've always wanted, I don't think he's exactly going to be there. I think he's a little hard to work with, a little rough around the edges. The LB is incredibly strong. Um, you know, uh, well, I guess it's really not that strong. I really thought it would be. Um, with the boosted to uh, physical damage to all enemies, 15 times chain. With the boost LB damage, but possibly it's really not that strong after all with having such a low modifier. I was really hoping with the upgraded and things like that. But the upgraded really is just adding these last two things that I don't think I really care about with Crack Shot being so bad. So overall, I think Prompto is going to stay on the bench. I think you guys are, unless you really love him. Um, he seems, he has a cool like fluff in his kit with the whole looking at the thing giving himself MP or randomly pulling out the weapons that he can you know either bazooka his chaining ability or the ability that can cause death or do a big hit I like the way they designed him but he just doesn't have enough power raw power to be back into the meta yet but let's look forward to his enhancements together my poor sweet Lulu why are they making you so bad dude I'm sorry to all the Lulus out there the Lulu lovers like myself things don't get better for poor Lulu uh, but let's talk about that. So we have an STMR booster cactuar. Increased magic 60% and spirit 20%. Increased water resist 50%. What a lackluster STMR. How could you give her this? It's so sad. Like, Lulu people don't watch this. Just skip ahead, dude. Don't watch this Lulu review because it's going to hurt your heart. Uh, problems with Lulu when she first came out. She essentially was stuck doing uh, flood was her best ability. It was bad. Flood is bad. Um, she had really no look at her. Look at her, uh, her 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 ability. She had two dual black magic cast focus. She had these passives. They weren't that great. Um, again, her best damage ability was flood, and it wasn't awesome. But wait until you hear these seven star abilities. They're gonna make you cry too. Um, we have ref uh, aqua prism. Excuse me. Increased water resistance by hundred percent to everybody, which is great. I mean, that's a cool uh, like support passive. Decreased water resistance 50% for 5 turns all enemies. Are you kidding me? On a 7 star unit, 50%? Come on, man! Like, Tidus was doing 100% at a 6-star. Um, and I know it was an LB, but you could build that bad boy up fast. Refreshing water. Recover 180 uh, MP to all allies. That would be awesome, but they lock it behind an LB gauge uh, crystal rate usage, so it's kind of rough to be able to use that. Um, it's not too rough, but you can't use it automatically, is what I'm trying to say, with your MP. Next up, we have Flare uh, Fury, which honestly got nerfed for us, in my opinion. Uh, we can now use it on turn 1. JP could use, had to wait a couple turns to be able to use it. It's a 4-turn cooldown. Fire magic damage 10 times with ignore spirit 25%. Problem being in JP, it was 15 times. Uh, increase LB gauge 8 to caster. Decrease water resist 100%. So while this is like kind of like a nerf buff, where now we can at least put the water resist down on turn 1, which you may really want to use on a uh, one-hit turn KO thing. So I think it gives a use to her, but not in a way of being a mage or being that strong mage we remember from the game. Um... She's just not that. She's just going to be a support unit. She's going to be a support unit to put up your water resist, to put up your MP at times, to uh, decrease water resist 100% on turn one. This isn't going to be enough damage to do anything. Looking at her passives, if you put her TMR, increase her magic, uh, she gets Mars Sig uh, Mar Sigil. Sigil. God, why am I trying? I can't say that. At the start of battle, recover MP and increase your LB by one per turn. Um, we have increased modifiers to Flood, Water Gun, Water, water Joe, which is great. And four times the Raging Water, uh, which is going to be good as well. And that's a lot of increases to our modifiers. But again, these moves just aren't as good as the other mages we have in Global's counterparts. Um, increased Sleep Resist and, and Petrify Resist, always great. Um, we have 20% uh, HP and MP, LB damage 40%. Increased magic when single wielding or dual wielding. So we do get single wield and dual wield magic up. A lot of units are getting that right now. Uh, here's our brave Marge Sigil. Uh, Sigil. God, I can't. Why do I, I know what it's called. Increased attack, defense, and spirit 20%. Auto hill. Like, what? What is this? It's so bad. This is so bad. It's like they took Lulu and they were like, hey, we're, done. We're, we're, we're sick of doing Final Fantasy X stuff. We're just going to make you whatever. Uh, moving on down. She gets Tornado at 7 star. 
Wait, all, all units normally get that at six stars. She gets Raging Water, uh, which is going to be a four times increase on that multiplier if you do get her um, up to 105, it looks like. So four times the Raging Water, um, which is its consecutive uses. It's going to be the better version of Water Jaw, essentially. You have to build it up nine times. Water Jaw uh, is, uh, is uh, well, excuse me. You have to build it up. Yeah, yeah, nine times, uh, four times for Water Jaw, but this reaches a max of 16 times. I'm, I'm assuming if you add the four times at the end of this, um, and then this only goes up to a uh, six times max. So, uh, you know, it does more damage. It does increase all of her other um, uh, abilities she was using. Um, that she was using, but they weren't good. Looking at her limit burst, she's doing a, uh, oh my gosh, dude. She's doing 15 times damage to all enemies. She did get a 30% increase to her LB damage, I do believe, in her passives. Where was that at? Um, well, 40%, but it's still not enough. Guys, Lulu as a mage kind of got nerf buffed. You're not going to be using her for her damage. She's literally just going to be sitting in there. I guess you could build up her raging water attack on the side, but literally, I just don't think you're using her ever. Like, unless you really need that water resistant down by 100% at the start of battle. Uh, strictly speaking, because she doesn't really do anything else during the fight, uh, besides wait for LB gauge to come up and then spin that to refill your mana. And there are a ton of other units can do it the same. So I'm sorry, Lulu, but you are not that great. Next up, we have everybody's favorite kitty cat from FFBE, Conchira. She uh, was pretty good when she first came out. I think a lot of people overlooked her, though, because of uh, other units being in the meta, and people didn't really want to uh, invest into Conchira. It was a, uh, a hybrid damage dealing, lots of elements covered, just not the high... Like, didn't really excel into one element because that's essentially what we do in this game right we pick an element we build our team around that and we excel into that um but can be used in fights where you need multiple elements uh and didn't really have the highest of hab uh, hi hybrid hybrid man my, my hicks coming out in me the hybrid uh uh Damage multipliers, but we'll get into that later. Uh, magic control ring is the STMR. Attack 50, magic 50, so it would be good for hybrid users, but we have Fravia's STMR at this point. Uh, but you could use this if you, as a backup as well. Giving you all those different uh, elements or resist, always a great thing to have that backing you up to take less damage. And then the attack 50 and magic 50 are great for flat stats there for um, hybrid users who are looking to use like a true double hand um, or a true dual wield or something like that kit because that high stat that will be increased by that. Um, let's go down and look at her kit again. We were talking about it. She has very, a lot of coverage. Um, not the highest multipliers again. And then on top of that, she didn't really decrease uh, resistances high enough as to what was in the game at the time. It was like 75% or higher was what you wanted. So what we need to look at now is a bigger, uh, a better chaining family. So if we look over here... Um, her uh, frame uh, attack frames were all over the place. They weren't that easy to chain with another another one. So we want a bigger chaining family so she can just have like focus. What we're looking for in Kunshira is focus, in my opinion. Um, while having all the stuff to back her up, if you need to do that damage, we want to be able to focus and just do a lot of damage to the boss. Okay. So that's the first thing we get is Tempest Spellblade, lightning and wind damage eleven times to all enemies. AR ray chain, <laughs> a ray chaining. Because I'm never saying that word again. I always get made fun of when I try to say it. I don't know how to say it. I Errol Ray. A roll ray. There we go. A roll ray chaining. AR chaining, baby. She gets that, which is great for, especially for a team where you're using Lauren um, or Lunera. This is going to be there for you. She gets to kind of like focus on lightning and wind and can chain up there, which is great. Rising elements. Uh, uh, available turn one, six turn cooldown. Increase uh, defense and spirit for everybody by 100% and increase. Oh, okay. Fire, lightning, water, wind, and light element by 100% for three turns. Alright, so you're going to be able to bring her in as kind of a support, a damage yellow looks like at this point. Because there are a lot of fights when you need that resist like that. 100% for recovers and all those elements. That's great. So we look down at the next one. Um, six turn cooldown available in turn one. So five turn cooldown. Um, decrease defense and spirit for three turns to all enemies. And then she also imperils all of those. Whoa, that's kind of cool. For 70, I wish that was 100%. Why well, can you have made that 100%? By 70% for three turns to all enemies. So one ability is going to allow you to survive um, and put the elements of resist up. And the other ability is going to imperil by 70%. It really could have been like 75, 80. Give us something a little bit higher. But I understand it's a lot of elemental coverage, I guess. And it does cover the uh, lightning and wind, right? Lightning and wind that should be using when she was using this ability here anyway, which is pretty neat. Um, scrolling on down, we'll look at the passives here. If she has her TMR equipped, uh, which is a great TMR, by the way. Increase attack and magic 20%. Increase uh, equipment attack and magic 30% when dual welding. So it looks like they're wanting you to dual weld, which I think you're going to do anyway, due to the fact that you're trying to do this with, like, Lauren or Lunera or whoever out there that has the A-Ray uh, chaining family. So that's uh, interesting. Next up, she gets a multiplier increase to most of her abilities here. Uh, we have a lot. She, uh, pretty much all of them. She has so many abilities, guys. Look at all these things. So many abilities. 
um, <laughs> that she can use uh, at her disposal, which is sweet. And they get a little bit uh, better at uh, doing damage there. Nothing too crazy. I think this is going to be your damage dealing move with her anyway. Um, unless I'm a little bit wrong on that. I, I do believe that's where we're going to be moving into um, with Kunshir. I think she's just going to be a damage dealing uh, support, like a su support unit. Uh, for elemental resist and then kind of put to the side here She would have had her time to shine But we've had so many really good hybrid units come out that she's really just not there to do that hybrid damage anymore There, there are better options out there So you're pretty much in my opinion using her for this right here this ability and then on the side to be able to uh, chain with your other support unit You have on your team. Uh, she also has increased MP 20% She has a uh, pride of the uh, Natura uh, increased defense 20%, increased physical damage against beasts humans and fairies by 25% That's okay. It just adds a little bit more damage um so we use her LB, uh, we get access to Superior Mage Blade, which is going to be this. Uh, hybrid damage 11 times the one enemy, it's a finisher. That's okay to use. Hybrid damage 32 times the one enemy, that's a pretty big finisher. So again, let's look at what we're going to use with Kunshir. I don't think, I think her time has passed, sadly. If you want to use her though, she's still going to have her damage that she can do. You're going to be building her support, um, not building her support, excuse me. You're going to be using her as a support uh, to chain with this, to use this ability, and use this ability on the side if you need to. And then you're going to be finishing with her, uh, with your other chainers with this ability right here and then sometimes using this on the side as well so overall i think there are still some uses for her which is great that's what withstands the uh the test of time when it comes to power creep are support uses right because there's always a time when you may need that element elemental resist up and that's when you can be, bring kunshera in and not be too upset about it because you can finish with it chain with her all kinds of different stuff so i think she's okay and and can be used in the future Next up, I know is a tank unit a lot of people have been waiting for. Bosch finally gets his 7-star Awakening, so we're going to look into him and see what he gets. So, um, let's look at the STMR here. Increased HP 50% and Spirit 30%. Chance to counter attacks 30% with unquestionable loyalty. So, let's go and check and see what that is. Stop. I can't, I can't click on it. Oh, there we go. Um, recover 50% to cast her. So essentially, if you um, counter with a magic attack, you get the uh, MP back there. Increase HP 50% and spirit 30%. Seems like it's really strong on magic cover tanks. So I like that a lot. Also having the ability to uh, counter with giving yourself MP back. That's pretty good. So I actually like this STMR on maybe a uh, magic cover tank who doesn't need as much elemental protection. Because remember, you're sacrificing elemental coverage um, and, and uh, resistances for this 50% and 30% spirit. Okay, but that seems really good there on its own. So looking at Bosch, what what did Bosch do at uh, six star? Uh, Bosch would cover both physical and magic, could do both for you. Did a lot of breaking, and at the time that was really big. You can see that the breaking was 50%, uh, could do, uh, that's single, but it could also do AoE 45%. But at this point in his kit, he's going to need to become buffer, be able to take more hits compared to our other tanks, because these bosses eventually, in the 7 star meta, will start hitting much harder. So he needs to be able to, you know, take those hits and withstand that. His covers need a little bit of work as well. Um, on top of that, his breaks need to be increased, because at this point in the game, we have so many good breakers. Uh, for us to try uh, to decide to use Bosch, maybe his breaks need to increase a little bit. Because as we can see, um, his cover uh, coveraging was 75%, and that's okay. Um, I, I would like it to be uh, higher, but normally that procs anyway. His damage mitigation from 50 to 70%, it'd be nice if it was, it was just like locked in at a 70% or something. Just to give him a little bit more tankiness, you know what I mean? So let's look at what he gets. Uh, weight of the world. He can use confusing uh, lament. Okay, so these are all his breakers. So he can use all of these breakers. Um, these four right here, right? So, you know, magic, spirit, attack, defense. He can use twice in one turn, allowing him to do the 50% twice in one turn. Uh, that, that, that's useful in your tank. Again, um, if you're using no breaker and you're going to use your tank to do that, that's pretty awesome to have on you, uh, right there. He has, um, an auto revive, uh, he casts for himself and increases LB gauge five to all allies except for himself, but that does cost 15 LB. So it's pretty cool that he can, he can auto revive himself. That's going to be very useful in some fights. When you don't have the time to maybe put a revive on, he can do that to himself and spread the LB love. He has to use a little bit of his LB uh, uh, crystals, but when it comes to Bosch, his LB isn't really that useful for a tank. It only does like fire damage, if I remember correctly. So I like this ability. Uh, Bell of a New Dawn, available in turn one, five turn cooldown. Increase attack, defense, magic, and spirit 150% to himself, and then he decreases attack, defense, magic, and spirit by 65% to somebody else. So there we go. I mean, it's not meta-defining. We have a lot more units can break higher than that, but at least we have in the 65% range that he can cast and he buffs himself up by 150% making him more tanky so this is the problem I see with this which sounds weird is you guys know with tanks you guys are going to have to use their cover ability first and then move into this um, but that's still okay uh, you can get your break off on turn one maybe do like a tinier break just to survive uh, turn one and get into turn two and do the break on turn two 
Um, let's look at the nest ability. Increased defense and spirit 120% for three turns to all allies. Okay. And then uh, heals all allies. So again, it looks like Bosch is getting some support role um, upgrades here. Not really... Um, increasing his takingness a bit, it looks like, allowing him to have that auto-revive on himself, which is pretty neat. Uh, that also helps with tanking. I mean, if you could tank, if you're not strong enough to withstand the tank, if you can tank it for a while, die, come back, and get ready to tank again, that'll be okay as well. So, th th those are decent. Let's look at his passives he gets. Um, requirement TMR equip. And his TMR is the shield right here. Oops. Is this shield right here, if you guys remember. Um, now, there are much better shields out there at this point, so a little rough there. But if we have that on him, um... See what we get. Defense spirit up 30%, making him more tanky. Increased lightning resist uh, 50%. I mean, at this point, I think this gives you 30%. No, it gives you 50%. So if you have that on, on him, uh, if you put his TMR on him, he's 100% resist to lightning. So that's going to be great for you guys with the magic AoE cover. Increase LB gauge 2 per turn. And I think, again, that's just going to help you cast those abilities where he needs his um, he needs his LB crystals. That's going to help you guys get there. MP 20%. Increase health by 30%. Yes. Defense 20% with a heavy armor. Nice. Spirit with 20% with a light armor. That's okay if you have to put a light armor on. Um, auto cast protect Bosch at the start of battle. Okay, protect Bosch. Increase defense spirit by 80% to caster. So the very beginning if you don't have time to put defense and spirit up at least he has an 80 percent cast on him now normally again we're going to surpass that with 100 120 150 eventually but to have that put on you at the beginning is pretty is pretty cool and then again like i said his limit burst here um this right here is good negate three physical damage taken for three turns of caster it allows him to like mirage through it and not get hit um however you don't really care about the damage on him um too much uh so you, i think you're using your lb crystals to go ahead and uh use these two abilities right here so overall, what do I think about Bosch? I think that he can't. He's very suitable as a tank, either with the magic uh, magic cover or the um, the physical cover. So for people out there who are missing one or the other, Bosch can fill that role. Now, is he filling it as well as the other dedicated tanks? I don't think so. Um, I, his breaks are cool at 65% for the cooldown ability, but then he's going back to his 50% after that, which isn't terrible, but we're moving on past that and getting a little bit stronger. Bosch doesn't have any way to buff up the team besides the defense and spirit, right? So he has defense and spirit. He can't buff up attack and magic. That's not the worst. He kind of uh, fills that in with uh, a little bit of LB gauge fill rate that he can get, uh, or, or LB gauge just straight up. Uh, uh, stones there uh, to the team. So overall, I'm not saying he's the best in the world. He's also not the worst in the world. Very, uh, very suitable for either, uh, you know, physical or magic cover tank that you guys need. Praise be to Yevon. Now, my girl Yuna gets her 7 stars. She's busting out here. And you guys know how much I love Final Fantasy X. And Yuna does not disappoint. So I'm sorry, Lulu. Boop, get out of here. Walk and take her back. Because Titus and I, we got Yuna, baby. So if we remember TMR is Nirvana, which was a great staff. Gives auto limit. All kinds of stuff like that. Great stats on top of that. Let's look at the STMR. Yuna's clothes. Dude, I'm getting these. Even if they're not good, I'm getting them, dude. Because it's Yuna's clothes. You know what I mean? So we have uh, Defense 32, Magic 44, Spirit 78. Look at all those resistances we get on top of all those big stats. And we get an effect called Summoner's so increase evo match 20 percent my girl is good baby that stmr is great i'm gonna be very useful when it comes to uh oh man i'm so excited uh when it comes to you know, when it comes to a summoner, I do believe in the future, summoning becomes a huge part of the game. Like, right now, it's kind of like, ah, summon magic, it's kind of cool, let's kill it, uh, you know, it's a mission. Eventually, summoning magic, the tank, the, um, the bosses get so tanky that summoning magic is really good. We get so much evo magic up, eventually, in the meta, and some of the summoners that come out are super bonkers, that, uh, this is gonna be great, and you're gonna be able to actually do a lot of damage with your summons, which is awesome. I've always wanted these summons to be more of a, um, more useful, because there are a lot of fights where I don't even use the gauge unless it tells me to in the mission, so, looking forward to that you're gonna want this Yuna's clothes for that specifically so let's talk about Yuna and what she did at six star so Yuna was actually a damage dealing summoner at six star she had a little bit of healing a little bit of white mage but mostly she was summoning Valifor doing a lot of damage which I thought was amazing and now we have Anima in the game which is just sweet as hell um which is kind of weird but I'll have Yuna do it it doesn't matter um so what we need from her is maybe a little bit more damage she did need a little bit more of the white mage aspect to a summoner to be able to have her be like a side healer uh but other than that some more evo magic because that's essentially what we want in our um in our in our summoners uh looking on now let's see what she gets she gets dual cast which is great uh reason being is that way she can cast her uh white magic seals twice in a turn which is good she needed that um, Guardian Bonds, available turn 1, 3 turn cooldown. Grant HP Barrier to all the allies, so that's gonna be cool. Um, again, so if you're using her to fill up your, uh, your Evo Gauge, you're using her as your summoner, this is kind of like, she's side healing, right? She puts that barrier on everybody, they can take a 3,000 hit, or up to a 3,000 hit with that barrier, which is good. Um, Heart of the Faith, ooh, uh, available in turn 1, 4 turn cooldown, heal everybody by a shit ton, and increase Evo Gauge by 5, and 5 guys is actually... 
a burger joint. But also, <laughs> it's pretty good when it comes to Evo Gauge, right? Um, the thing about Yuna also is that to do her damaging abilities, as you can see with Energy Ray and Energy Blast, she would use the Evo Gauge to actually do that damage. So um, it's good to be able to fill that up and be able to do that. You can see if you do Prayer to the L um, Prayer of the Aeons, excuse me, it's a 2 to 4 that you fill up. So this is a solid 5. You don't have to worry about it being 2 to 4, which is, I, I, uh, this is really good. So if you get in a, in a tough spot, heal everybody, get your Evo Gauge up, or just use that anyway just for the 5 to go up. Looking at our pad passes, we have Moon uh, Moon Sigil. Sigil. I always say the wrong one first. Uh, TMR equi uh, equipped, and that's fine because I love uh, Nirvana. Increased defense, spirit, HP, and MP by 20%. Autocast Full Moon Saint every turn. Full Moon Saint increase evocation rate gauge by 1 to 2 every turn. Just period. So it's just going up every turn, period. As long as you have Nirvana on Yuna, every turn, it's just like the LB thing. You know what I mean? That Evo cage is going up. And that's going to be great when you're trying to summon uh, some of these summons. I love it to death. Upgrades LB. And I know her LB is excellent. Uh, defense uh, by 20%. Increase magic and spirit by 20, uh, 30%. There's some Evo magic in there. Uh, there's some modifiers. Oh, 0 0.5 times. Not the best. Uh, that's okay. Um, post Heart of the Faith. Which is this ability. So once we cast that, the modifiers are actually increased by 1.5 times. Okay, so they're going up. So if we use Heart of the Faith, it's actually going to be a crap ton of Evo damage. And again, guys, I'm telling you, summoners are going to be big later on. So that's going to be a lot of damage. Uh, let's look down at what she gets. So if we look at what she had before 7-star, um, she had a raise. She had a re-raise. But if you look at her cure, it was bad. It was like Kuraga. We need something better than that. Um, and, and we only had Dispel, we didn't have Dispelga, and then I already knew that they, they already put this, I looked up my girl, you know I did. They put Dispelga, which removes all, everything from them, and then put Kiraja, having her be able to dual cast these abilities, makes her that damage dealing summoner white mage that you really want her to be. And then we have the Sending, what a, dude I love Final Fantasy X. Uh, heal everybody by a lot, revive all KO'd allies, and put them up to 89%. Um, they, they put a heal that happens, uh, split over every turn to all allies, so after everybody's healed up, revived up, put that heal on them so it slowly heals them every turn. It increases their defense and spirit if you level this bad boy up to 134% to everybody, which is good. And then it also refreshes MP split over the turn, so now she has MP refresh right there in her kit when she does do her, um... Her LB, uh, which is, like I said, look at this bad boy. It is excellent. So overall, Yuna is a stellar summoner. Uh, probably our best summoner we have in the game right now. I'm just going to say it. I don't care if I'm fanboying. I think she's the best summoner we have in the game right now. Obviously, we have to wait on a couple of things coming out. Uh, you know, different. There will be better summoners coming out. We don't even have our enhancements yet. So uh, I can't wait to see those. Yuna, you're my girl and you're great. And last but not least, we have CG Fina, Lotus Mage Fina. If you guys didn't know this about me, I have been using her 6-star for the longest time because I love Fina so much. I love the character, the way it looks. I love using FFBE main characters. Um, and so I've been using her over Ayaka 7-star, even though I have it, just because I've been waiting for this moment to happen for a long time. So um, uh, for as far as the debates out there, Ayaka, uh, CG Fina, they both have their uses. They're both like somewhat equal in fighting. You know, Ayaka's got that stop cure, uh, stop resist whereas Fina has an LB that uh, gives everybody auto-revive the whole time and also provides a couple of other things that Ayaka doesn't. So it's kind of tit for that tat, but those are the big uh, things, in my opinion, that stand out to me, that Lotus Mage Fina um, can put the auto-revive with her LB, whereas Ayaka has the ability to uh, remove stop and then also be resist to stop so she can't be stopped there and get that off your team, okay? So moving on now, let's look at this STMR. Autocast Brave White Lotus, which I'm going to have to click here to show you guys this because so, it's actually not that bad. Um, at the start of battle, recover MP 12% per turn. That's a big MP recovery. And then also increases your LB by 2.5 per turn, which is excellent. Uh, Brave White Lotus increased attack, defense, magic, and spirit by 100% to caster. And then also is going to heal you per turn. So uh, this right here... Again, we do have buffs that go over 100%, right? But at the start of the battle, um, or... Um... I, I, I think this ability should be cast when somebody comes back from the grave, hopefully. I'm unsure on that, like, you know, if they die and come back. Uh, but throwing this on a tank or a support unit seems incredible to me, right? As uh, on the side here, you get all this MP recovery, which is going to be great. Um, increased LB fill rate per turn to be able to get those LBs off that you need to. And then allowing you to heal per turn uh, by a big amount. And then having this, uh, you know, the stats on you, so you don't have to really... You know, at the beginning, sometimes you don't have time to be uh, buffing up everybody, or you can't fit a buffer in your team. That's great. I'm not going to say it's the most stellar STMR in the world, is it? No. Uh, do you need two Lotus Mage Fina? I don't think so, so you can get the STMR. Uh, but overall, I, I think it's a pretty decent uh, STMR. I know a lot of people shit on it, but I, li I like it quite a bit, to be honest. I'm definitely going to be getting it. So moving on down, there was nothing wrong with CG Fina. I'm sorry, I'm not really, I can't really say there was too much wrong. She was really a stellar unit, a stellar, ma uh, a stellar excuse me, white mage uh, in every way. She had things, I mean, maybe 
maybe tri give her triple cast, I guess. I don't know. Uh, let's see what she gets, though. She gets two cooldown abilities. So um, both available in turn one, one having a much bigger cooldown. So the first one, you get three-turn cooldown, auto-revive on herself, and she goes up uh, for 3%. Revive all KO'd allies to 100%. Um, so I this this ability right here is, is decent. Uh, being able to put the auto revive on herself and revive any KOs that are down is great because she already has um, reverse hearts, revive all K uh, KO'd allies. It's a 70 uh, mana. This is 120. But I think what's different about this is it allows her to put the auto revive on herself, bring everybody back up. If everyone were to die, even including her, she would come back and be able to use the reverse hearts, bring them all back and recover. Do you know what I mean? So it's it's a big recovery thing for her uh, and, and to stop your team from being wiped out uh, instantly, which is great. And then she also gets eternal light. And this is a big one, and it's why it's a 7 turn cooldown heal everybody by a large amount and then put auto revive on them for three turns so you have an on demand at any time you may need um 100 uh, no, sorry 80 percent uh auto revive on everyone so if there's a time in the fight when you're like okay this threshold's coming we're all gonna die eternal light put that on everybody up or you can even if it's at the very beginning of the battle and you're not able to get your lb up on someone like fina or riku this is there to like stop that it's like okay well we i know we're gonna die on turn two there's no way i can get through it auto revive everybody up which is so good on top of everything else so we're just adding on top of it like again like i said cg fina was just already amazing to begin with these abilities right here help you with uh not being turn one shit on the uh, shit off the face of the earth okay uh moving on now let's see what passive she gets at seven star so we have her tmr equip which is one of the best tmr in the games the hairpin uh increased attack defense magic and spirit 20 percent increased light percent 30 percent and the lb gauge up by one per turn is excellent that's the biggest one there she does get some stats that's awesome but we want to be using her lb we want to have it up all the time because that's the thing that puts the auto revive on everybody so we want to have that as much as possible Dual Fina's, which I love this as well. Um, it's going to give her uh, dark resist or light light resist up, depending on what you uh, you equip uh, on her. Um, th these aren't the biggest uh, percents up as they are, but as you go up and you use her own ability that puts up um, elemental resist, this could help her survive a fight. Defense twenty percent. Then we have uh, virtuous pr prayer, increased modifier to uh, arch punisher. And then also Sacred Burst, which these are going to be the counters, I do believe, that we have, uh, that they can do. And then we have Counter Magic Attacks with vir uh, Virtuous Prayer, max two times per turn. It's 25%. And some of these do pop off. I used to shit on these all the time. Sometimes they happen and you're super happy about them. So let's just see what this new one is. Recovery MP 20 to all allies. Increase LB Gauge 1 to all allies. So I want this to proc as much as possible if she gets smacked. That's amazing. Uh, so again, that's just adding, you know, putting the salt... Uh, on the, uh, on whatever you want, putting putting the sugar, I guess we wouldn't call it salt, but I mean salt's good on some things uh, that you want them on, like French fries, uh, for example. She didn't get any new magic, which is kind of a kind of a, a letdown, only because again, uh, you know, you just want to see new things in the seven star. Looking at her LB, uh, let's see what uh, changes about it. Does a little bit more damage, it looks like. Um, doesn't decrease uh, light or dark resist anymore, and doesn't do anything different here. So overall, um, her. Increasing her LB, uh, uh, it doesn't really seem that great. It is uh, based off spirit, so it is going to do damage because you are building a lot of spirit on her. Um, but it still doesn't seem like something you want to invest too much time into. You're pretty much doing this for this big auto revive right there. So overall, what do I think about CG Fina? Again, one of the best, if not the best healers in the game, alongside Ayaka. If you want the, um, the ability to, uh, you know... She has, like, Manitopia. She has all this different stuff she can use. But I think the biggest difference, again, is Lotus Mage Fina has the LB that can put everybody on auto-revive. Um, and Ayaka has the stop resist and the getting rid of stop. And also has barriers. And barriers are pretty cool in this game at this point, too. So you kind of have to pick and choose what you want to take into battle. But overall, both of them are excellent. And Lotus Mage Fina is as well. All right, guys. We've reached the end of the video. I do believe this is our... Um one of our more lackluster 7-star Awakenings um, for a lot of people. However, Lotus Mage, Fina, Yuna, and Bosch, huge uh, opportunity there for you guys to increase your power level on your teams if you had those 7-stars waiting. While units like Duke and... Um, Prompto, things like that, they can help you guys out with doing damage, and they can do some things, but not really the best. They're kind of more niche and more to have fun. So if you guys like this video, give it a thumbs up. Comment down below, CG Fina or Ayaka. I want to know what your opinion is, and then subscribe for future content. We'll catch you guys in the next video.